I'm a game developer and I've released my games to over 1 million people, but I haven't made a single penny because they're all free. So I've decided to start working on my first commercial game, Solar Standoff. An online 1v1 survival game where you have to buy upgrades to destroy the other person's planet while defending your own. Now this whole idea started back in September, when I spent all my money on legal fees after being convicted of... You know what, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The thing is, I had no idea what type of game I wanted to make. So, I guess we'll just wing it. My first idea was a roguelike where you fight monsters made out of goo. I got the player movement up and running with a jetpack of all things. I don't know man, this was a long time ago, but I've grown up since then. I then added a gun into the game and modeled a map that I traced from F Fiji. Okay, what the f- I added some water into the game, made some clouds, and for some reason, a, a, a pirate ship? I think it was at this point that it clicked that that makes no sense. So I decided instead to make heaven, the literal kingdom of God, with these marble pillars and rainbows and some sort of cultist obelisk. This thing, okay, actually, now nah, you can stay. The gun is back now and you can reload them because that's such a priority, clearly. Oh no, my mistake, there's two guns. Okay, so here's what I've come up with. One, we're gonna need a simple environment probably with some sort of procedural generation and texturing. This will keep level design to a minimum. Two, multiplayer. This avoids us having to code complex enemy AI and I mean, come on, who doesn't love multiplayer games? Three, and most importantly, not a roguelike. You're probably thinking, oh, but Baji, doesn't that mean you'll have to start again from scratch? Wrong. Reusable interactable system, player movement, weapon inventory, regular inventory with coins and everything. Surprisingly, this actually shouldn't set us that far back. Let's just look at the to-do lists that I prepared earlier and work through that. Oh, oh God. Okay, so multiplayer is now working. The players can connect to a lobby through Steam and move around. All it took was put in an entire library from Unity to Godot. <sighs> Next up, we need a level. So I'm gonna show you my entire level design process for this entire game in a single clip. Are you ready? Can you feel my genius coming through the screen right now? All right, there is a bit of a problem right now though. In this clip, there's a bit of a trick. If the player were to walk off the edge of the planet, then they just fall downwards, there's no gravity. So instead of applying gravity downwards, we apply it in the direction from the center of the player to the center of the planet. And that seems to be working fine. Okay, so I want some sort of ore that players can mine to use as currency for buying upgrades. So I modeled this pickaxe. I do wanna change that later to a drill, but it will do for now. I then gave it an animation and networked it so that any player can see what weapon you have out. All right, one of our main points was that we wanted procedural generation for these levels. So I wrote a shader for the planet that allows us to add some noise and change the colors. So you can get a pretty earthy looking planet or one that looks like Mars just by changing a couple of colors. I also tried making this ring shader, but I couldn't quite get it to look right. So maybe, maybe in the future. And finally, I added a purple sun into the game. I don't know why it's purple. Okay, so in one of my favorite TV shows, Future Armor, there's this telescope that allows you to smell distant objects. We're gonna need some sort of telescope in our game, so I figured we'd use that as a reference. So I got to work on modeling that in Blender and added an eyeball on the end, which I keep doing for some reason. I then wrote this shader to move the eyeball around and make it blink every couple of seconds, which seems to add quite a lot. Then I repurposed the interactable system from the obelisk and now you can view the other player's planet through the telescope and see what they're getting up to. I do wanna say, spying on anyone is bad and being the victim of spying is worse. So to avoid getting watched through an interplanetary telescope, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark allows you to browse the web while masking what you do online. It takes you from looking like this to this so that everything you're doing is safe and protected, like having a shield surrounding everything you do online. Surfshark also allows you to go virtually into countries that you aren't even in. So let's say the planet on the left is the UK and the planet on the right is Canada. You can hop between them at will and watch content only available in those countries on all of your favorite streaming sites 
all from the comfort of your own virtual telescope. Surfshark is available for as little as £1.59. $1.89. Surfshark also has a 30 day money back guarantee. Plus, by using my code BARGY or by clicking the link in the video description, you can get up to an additional six months for free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, so there's this famous photo of a Bigfoot sighting, real by the way, where he's seen swinging his arms and looking straight into the camera. For some reason, the thought of adding this into the game just completely killed me, so I decided to embrace that. I found this pack online with a ton of monsters in it for like $10, including Bigfoot. So I picked that up and made some slight alterations to their Bigfoot model. Perfect. I also added the eyeball shader from the telescope onto his eyes, and he's looking pretty sick. Anyway, in keeping on the theme of laziness, I decided to make all of the animations in this game procedural. So I added IK foot placement to his feet, and... What? I also added some springs to his arms so that when he runs they mimic the behaviour from the Bigfoot photo. We'll tune this all up later, but for now it's working well enough. Alright, next up we need some survival mechanics. I thought long and hard about how I wanted this game to be unique and to stand out, so I chose mining. I got to work on replacing that pickaxe from earlier with a shiny new drill and coupled it with some animations. Once again this is only placeholder, but it's looking alright. For the rocks I went on poly.pizza, a great 3D model site by the way, and found some royalty free rocks, because for some reason I just can't model rocks for the life of me. I then scattered some crystals around it and added this glassy refraction shader in Godot. By the way, these crystals are little chunks of barginium, an element which I actually discovered specifically for this video. So if that doesn't make you subscribe, I don't know what will. I then made these rocks mineable and added some UI to display the amount that you currently have. So the planet now spawns these rocks on the bottom half of it, ensuring that one of them is always in line with the equator so that both players have the same minimum distance from their crafting station to their first rock. Speaking of crafting stations, we need one. So I modeled that using a combination of poly.pizza assets, as well as some of my own. I also added a screen shader for the computer, which is running Cosmos. Inside of Cosmos, you can buy different upgrades, the first of which being this shield. This changes from red to blue, depending on which team you're on. All right, so I have a few more tasks that I wanna finish to get the game into a decent state. So let's get to it. First, I improved the drill model by adding these spirals. Then I started on the next upgrade, the telescope laser. I modeled this satellite in Blender based on the Voyager space probes, so now you can see if the other player is watching you. Then I started to work on another skin for the game, the Arctic Sasquatch. This skin comes with a backpack and is available to anyone who pledges to me on Patreon. Also, if you get one of these two tiers, you'll actually get a Steam key for the game, which will allow you to help me playtest it once it's ready. You can claim the key right now though, and you'll keep it once the game releases, so what, what are you waiting for? If you're already a YouTube member, I'm moving all of that over to Patreon. It works the exact same way, but that will be cancelled after this month, and Patreon will be the way going forward. Make sure you subscribe for the next video, where we should have a Steam page ready, and we're gonna have to make everything look better, because it looks kind of bad right now. Anyway, I'm off to play LEGO Fortnite, I'll see you soon for the next devlog.